Hello, I'm Matt and this Loxley Quality Time tutorial is to help you with this painting, A Ride in the Sun from the Cantiso Collection. If you haven't already watched our Techniques tutorial videos, please have a look at them before starting your project. They give you some valuable information about painting with the quality time range and help you get the most out of your quality time. This video contains specific information about your chosen painting, but we assume that you are already familiar with the general techniques covered in our tutorial videos. A Ride in the Sun features the village of Treddington, and I have added a carriage drawn by two horses which was a popular form of transport in the 19th century. The Church of St Gregory, captured in this picture, has the tallest spire in Warwickshire and still has musket ball marks on the door from when it was under siege during the English Civil War. Land at Treddington was granted to the Bishop of Worcester in the 8th century and there is a long history with the Bishops of Worcester who were in possession of the Manor of Treddington until the 14th century. I'm going to start this with the um, sky. I've mixed up this pale blue and um, using horizontal brush strokes. There is a technique video on painting skies which I recommend that you have a look at. You'll never get it just perfect on the stage one, particularly on a big area like what we're doing here. It always will look a bit patchy but that's fine. As I'm coming down I'm going to mix just a little bit more white as I come down the canvas because the horizon is always paler always paler towards the horizon. You'll notice on the photo that there is some misty clouds so I want to leave these bits out for now on stage one. It's harder to paint the white over the blue so be careful to go around the church as well. It's important to keep to these outlines if I cut down the edge here and then finish off with the brush strokes horizontally again and it'll always look right. For the clouds it doesn't matter which direction the brush strokes but for um, the blue bit of the sky where there's no clouds it always looks best done horizontally. Particularly on stage one if your paint's getting a bit dry you can add a little bit of water working my way around what would be this misty little misty cloud. All my brush strokes finishing up in that direction go over it a couple of times before it starts to dry. Work your way down the canvas. Try and get the same mix of blue both sides of the spire just so this looks right. You'll notice that the canvas edge is clean. There's no staples or tacks and um, this is so that you can paint around the edge. Then if you choose not to frame the picture it still looks complete. You can turn the canvas if it's easier to paint. I'm just having it at this angle for the video. Just keep it the same colour as the paint on the surface of the canvas. I'm now going to do um, some of the church here and the buildings using this grey colour and I've mixed up this using dark brown and white, mostly white. Never be afraid to mix the colours, you know, always mix them on the paler side, the colours, because they tend to mix a bit darker than you would imagine. And I'm finishing up the brush strokes in the direction of the stonework so that it looks right and again keeping to the lines but you'll notice that the um, outlines show through the paint which is brilliant because then I can pick them up at stage two and work in some more detail painting around the clock here and then working my way up the spire again I'm following the direction of the steeple here just covering over this area and then finishing off in the direction of the stones again and they can use the same color for the um, roof as well but just go the other way so I'm following the angle of the roof you see my brush strokes I have to cut down the edge there and then finish off in that direction always try and keep the individuality of a shape so you've got that roof there and then this one here I'm doing it at that different angle because the brush strokes will show through in the paint so you're keeping to this line down here working your way across just finishing off this roof and then this roof here I'm going at the other angle using a slightly darker shade for the wall here. Always keep referring to your picture so that you can see where the stone should be painted and you've got ivy growing up here and some plants here and here so you don't want to paint them. I'm now doing the um, these timbers at the front of the gable here and I'm using just a dark brown and the very tip of the paintbrush. Keep it loaded with paint and then just hardly touching the surface. Really detail brush strokes. This is just the stage one so you, when you go over it again in stage two it makes these more bold other colours. While I've got this dark brown I'm going to go over some of the, um, the edges. 
I'm now doing this driveway in front of the house and I've mixed this mostly white just with a tiny bit of yellow just to give it this lovely gravelly look down there. I'm using the big brush because it's not a particularly detail area but at the same time being careful not to go over these lines. Just painting around the cartwheel, trying to keep it off the horse's feet. Just painting between their feet so it's not going on the actual hooves of the horses. So I've mixed this um, pale green using predominantly yellow with a small amount of green and I'm just keeping to the areas where the trees are with small dabs of the brush. I'm using the larger brush but just careful brush strokes. It doesn't matter too much the direction of these brush strokes for vegetation. If you've got them going at different angles it actually looks better like the real leaves, keeping to the outline, painting around the horses. And I'm going to use this various shades of this particular green right the way across the um, vegetation. So where it's growing on the house here. Try and keep the individuality of the trees. So you're just keeping to each particular bush and plant. You'll notice in this particular one here, there is some just pure yellow. So I'm adding that with the little brush. If you follow the direction of the plants growing in, it always looks better on the brush strokes. So like this one, just bring the brush strokes down the way the branches are growing or hanging. If they're growing upwards, then brush them up. And um, there is a video specifically on trees and foliage, the technique video, which I recommend you have a look at before painting your quality time picture. This gives you more information on how to paint trees. So I'm just going to show you the window. Well, at this stage it's just um, a dark grey made up of the dark brown and mostly white. I've left the frame bit and just done the actual lattice windows. You can see through the diagonals so I can pick those up later. I'm now doing the um, clock face on the church here. and I'm using the lighter of the two blues, just painting over the whole area. It'll need two coats of paint because the blue is a bit transparent. And paint over the clock hands, you can put those in again later. I'm now doing the grass area at the front and there's short grass, so I'm doing horizontal brush strokes. Even though the grass grows upwards at this stage, I'm just brushing it out this way. So it's a very pale green painting round the stones and just keeping to this area. So nice smooth brush strokes with the larger of the two brushes. I'm getting rid of as many brush strokes as I can so it's a nice smooth finish like a well cared for lawn obviously being cut fairly recently. I will come on to later showing you how to do this at stage two as well. So I'm now using my small brush, more of the two brushes, and this is the light brown, and I'm just doing the tree trunk that you can see. Very small brush strokes with a well-loaded brush. And then I've, while I've got this color, I'm going to do the horses and just the brown part of them. So again, using the small brush. If you can spread the paint out thinly, it looks paler, more of a chestnut color. So you don't want to put the paint on too thick. And you can refer to your photograph if you're just using the very tip of your brush and spreading the paint out, painting around the reins and the straps of the horses here. So I'm just going to do the white of the horse here. It might seem a bit strange putting white paint onto a white canvas, but the brush marks will show. For the shaded areas, you're just mixing a little bit of blue, or you can use brown, just so you've got an off-white colour. I've um, mixed pink for the faces of these people, using um, mostly white with a tiny bit of red. It's actually come out quite red the lady a bit of a paler face and then for the hair I'm going to use dark brown on the lady as a bun. I'm now doing this road area and I've mixed this grey colour using um, white with the dark brown and doing the road that goes round here using the larger of the two brushes. Take it around the corner of the canvas and you notice my brush strokes with the paint quite thick of coming around the corner like that so you can pick up the angle of the road. You can also use this colour for the stones the edge of the grass there. I'm going to do the cart now using the small brush here, brushing the paint out so it doesn't get too dark, so you don't want the paint too thick. Quite a lot of detail in this cart, so you just have to take your time and refer to your photo as much as you need to. For the wheels, if you use just the very tip of the hair of the brush, so you're only loading the very tip and painting with the very tip. You can use your brush practice area on the box to practice these delicate brush strokes. I use the dark brown for the reins of the horse. These leather straps here. Again, using the, just the tip of the small brush around its nose and the blinkers. So I'm now doing the um, people, their coats and their hats in dark brown. Looks like black. And I'm going to leave the shirts white 
and if you load a tiny little bit you can just put a little eye for both of the people and then the whip just goes up and then curls round at the top and then for his tie I'm going to do that yellow just so that you've got a bit of contrast so you can put the paint on quite thick for his tie there now that's stage one completed so I'm now doing stage two, starting stage two, and I'm going back to the sky first. I've mixed up my blue, and just as before, I'm working with um, horizontal brush strokes. And th at this stage, the patchiness starts to disappear, so you can get a nice smooth sky. And again, make it paler towards the horizon, so you're adding just a bit of white as you come down the, down the canvas. And then I'm going to do a bit of work on this cloud area here. These are very faint clouds, they're not very bold. And all the brush strokes need to go in one direction for these particular clouds. It's not like the big fluffy clouds that are all over the place. These are almost like pencil lines in the sky. So I'm just adding a bit of white back in. Just not much paint on the brush, almost a dry brush. And I'm just subtly adding the white. I don't want it to be too bold, so it's not got to be a solid white, but just a almost a hint of white across the blue sky. So I'm putting a bit of paint on this still a larger brush I'm using, and I brush it out a little bit on my mixing area so that it's not loaded with paint, and just gently drag it in the direction that the cloud is going, like that. And then you can paint your main sky up to it. The lovely clouds, these misty ones, they're nice contrast. So you're just slowly building up the layers of paint, nice gentle brush strokes, working it till you've got it smooth. There's no quick way of fixing a sky, you just work your way across. I'm now doing the um, doing stage two on the church here, and I've mixed a slightly darker grey than before. I'm just adding some of the detail into the stonework. Again, keeping in the direction of the stones that they run in, just selectively painting in a bit of the detail and using the darker grey for the detail on the church, so you're not losing the detail on these on this architecture. Same on the on the spire, holding in the detail, and you can add white back in as well, just pure white if you feel it's getting too dark in areas. Keeping the detail of these edges. Just putting in some of this detail on the spire. So you're just using shades of grey made up using the dark brown and the white. With the small brush and the um, dark brown, I'm just doing very fine lines for the tiles. The finer you can get these, the better. And along the edge of the roof line, just to show you how to bring out the tiles. Right, I'm just doing a stage two on these beams. You'll notice that they get more intense, look a lot better on the, on the stage two, after stage two. I'm gonna use this dark brown with a little bit of white for the um, windows, putting some of the detail back in the windows. And then this is just pure dark brown. So using the very tip of the brush, putting some of these leaded lights in, and then the door. So just slowly building up the picture. I'm now going to do the second coat of the blue, because you can see it's a bit patchy still. Second coat should help. And then I'll have to add the hand when the blue's dried. So I'm doing stage two of the trees now, using darker shades of green and with a small brush. Not covering the whole area, but just selectively doing small brush strokes at different angles. You want a nice crisp edge on the edge of your bushes and plants. So where it meets the sky, get a nice sharp edge with a loaded brush. You don't want it too thick, so you're just spreading it out. And you can see the texture appearing here. So that you'll notice that trees, they all vary a little bit. And I'm keeping the individuality of the trees. So I've kept that bush like that. And then these ones, I don't want the trees to merge into each other. I want them to stand out as individual trees. And I'm just using light brush strokes because these trees are further away. I don't want them too bold because they're more in the distance. If I make these too bold, it'll start to make the horses look further away. I'm spreading out the paint, not too thick here or too dark. You can keep it mixed with yellow if it's further away, bringing out the vibrancy of these plants. What you'll notice about the um, trees is if you follow nature's direction, like these ones are just growing normally like this, and then there's some trees that hang down. So these branches we're going to do using downward brush strokes, using different shades of green here. So you see it's going over and hanging down. And if you follow nature's flow, it'll always look right. Nature has a direction, and if you 
respect this in your painting. It won't look wrong to the eye. Putting in some green in these areas. You notice my brush is coming down. I'm adding yellow just to lighten it in places so I can get contrast. You want contrast in the greens. So you create different greens by adding different amounts of yellow. And then down here, this is just pure green. For these ones, these are growing upwards, so your brush is a different angle again. So you're just following nature's direction. I'm going to do some on this big tree here. What you'll notice about these, the foliage on this, that it's because it's a pine tree it's quite spiky so I'm using very small the tip of the brush but very small brush strokes or small dabs with a loaded brush and you're picking up some of the spikiness in the foliage so you want the leaves to look sharp and I've mixed a bit of light brown to create this darker green so I've mixed light brown with the green on the edge here I'm just getting some fine crisp edge these fine brush strokes just makes it look more stunning can revisit this when this is dried and add more green into it, build it up, build up the layers of colour. On stage one, if you remember, I did the, the brush strokes horizontally. And then this stage two, I'm doing using just the pure green, not too much on my brush. And I'm using upward brush strokes so you can see, almost see the individual grass using the small brush and small brush strokes with the brush not too overloaded. You don't want any patches too dark, so just thinning it out where I've put it on too thick. We're following nature's direction. We've done a flat lawn and now we're just doing the grass growing upwards. Just doing stage two here and I'm using the small brush with darker shade of green and just dabbing it like this. You can work at this, try not to get it all the same colour. So you're wanting variation using these small brush strokes. You're getting a variation of intensity of green. And I'm doing the brush strokes upwards the way the tree is growing. I'm going to do the um, clock face now, the hands on the clock, and on the photograph you'll notice they are gold, but I'm going to use white because I think that looks better. This just shows you what you can do with a bit of artistic license. You can decide what looks best. I've done these small dots of white just to mark where the hours are on the clock. Now that's stage two complete. I've um, put all the detail into this vegetation and all these individual bushes. The grass is all finished. I've completed the sky, including the, the clouds, the cloud areas, they're all complete. And all the detail on the house and the church, the detail on the roof. And stage two is complete on the horses and everything. Right, I'm ready for stage three, the shadows. And there is a technique video on painting shadows, which has got more information, which I recommend you have a look at. I've um, mixed up my shadow paint using the red and blue. It doesn't matter which brush you use, use whichever's most practical. We're using this watered down for the building here on the church. So I've used my shadow mix and I've added water to this shadow because it's a soft shadow, not intense. I don't want to lose the detail of the building here. And then um, for the shadows under the trees here, they're very dark. So I'm just using the shadow paint with no water added to it. Still maintaining the shape of the tree. I love this stage because it brings the picture to life, gives it depth and um, makes everything stand out. The building stand out and gives it all the depth. I'm gonna use two coats for these dark areas. So I'm building it up a bit darker. Just doing the shadow under this eave here, the watered down version. Using my small brush for some of the detail in between the leaves. That's um, stage three completed of the shadows and I'm now on stage four, which is the highlights. And there is a technique video on highlights, which I recommend you watch. So this is just adding pure white with the small brush, but just using the very tip of it. So it's just where the sun's catching the, the actual objects. Particularly on the glass, it looks very effective. You can refer to your picture, your photograph, as well as the guide for where you might want to put highlights. Just a tiny speck here and there. Makes it look brilliant. Just finishes it off, even on places like the stone here. Do one on this chimney, on this corner of the church. And I'm gonna do the um, weather vane at the top. So that's the highlights done. Right, so that's stage four completed, the highlights done. So that's the finished picture. I've enjoyed this painting. Good luck with yours. Goodbye.